Good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Vicki with Crochet and More with Vicki Jo. And I hope everyone is having a great day today. It's another beautiful day here in Arizona. And today um, I am going to be doing the continuation of the Bible study from last week. I believe last week I talked about the uh, six strategies that Satan will use against us, against our minds. And I also talked about how the mind is the greatest bat battlefield that we go through. And this is where, right here is where Satan will attack. So today I want to talk about the spiritual counter strategies that we can come and, and uh, use against Satan. How we're going to be able to the things that we can do to be able to stand against his attacks. That's what I want to talk about today. And like I said, the greatest hindrance to us is what goes on in our mind. He has a way of bringing our past back to us. And, you know, all of these, he accuses the brethren. Well, he accuses us. He doesn't let up. He's always... You know, coming at us with something, speaking into our minds, and you know, it's just just how he works. So today, this is what I'm going to talk about. You know, the strategies that God has given us to overcome these mental attacks. Okay, now there are, I believe, let me see, one, two, three. There's seven. If I don't get through all of these this morning, then I will continue it next week. I know I had a pretty lengthy video last week, and I'm going to try not to do that today. But what I want, the first one that I want to talk about is, or number one, is to let the Holy Spirit search your mind. Ask God to search your mind to reveal any wrong attitudes. How many know we have wrong attitudes? Many times, all of us do. None of us are exempt for this. We have wrong attitudes. We have wrong motives, thoughts. We have thoughts that come into our mind that don't belong there. Um, I don't know about you, but you could just be sitting around crocheting, doing whatever, and all of a sudden a bad thought or some type of a thought that's not pleasing to God will just pop into your mind. These are thoughts that we need to ask the Lord to reveal to us. And then, once we do this, we need to ask for that forgiveness. Okay, So, this is a, a scripture that we can actually pray and ask the Lord. And it's found in Psalms 139, 23 through 24. Let me look this up. I have my Bible over here on my computer. And like I said, it's Psalms 139. Let me find Psalms 139. And it starts with verse 23. And it says, Search me, O Lord and know my heart try me and know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me into the way everlasting ask the lord this pray this pray that he would search the holy spirit would search search our heart search our mind what's in there lord show me what's in there Show me what are in my thoughts. Sometimes our minds are so busy, we don't even realize some of the things that are in there. So we ask the Lord, show me. See if there is any wicked way. Do we have any wicked ways in us today? And lead me into the way everlasting. What is the way everlasting? Lead me to that road of eternal life. That's everlasting. So we ask the Lord this. Then we ask for forgiveness for these wrong thoughts and use the Word of God to develop new thoughts. That's how we're going to renew our mind, is through the Word of God. 
the Word of God will renew because the Word of God is living. It's powerful. Amen. So by doing this, by grabbing a hold of the Word of God, searching the scriptures, look up scriptures that talk about the mind. You know, scriptures like this. Look these up and begin to use the Word of God to come against these attacks and um, develop new patterns, new thoughts. You know, I, I'm going to probably read that scripture, I think, that I read last time about the, the new, the newness, the new things we should be thinking about. I'll get to that in a minute. But we need to develop new thought patterns that will open up our spirit to this new life, to be able to walk as a new creation. The second one is use your spiritual armor. Okay, the armor starts from the head to the toes. It completely covers you, but we have to learn, we have to know how to use it. But in this specific um, lesson, we're gonna be talking about uh, regarding the mind that there's three pieces of armor that protects you from the mind that defends you from the attacks in your mind and they are found in Ephesians chapter 6 so let's if you have your Bible turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and starting with verse 16 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take on the helmet of salvation and the word of the Spirit which is the Word of God okay so the first uh, piece of armor is the helmet the hope of salvation a helmet is worn on the head and it implies protection to the mind. The believer who has the helmet of salvation in place understands that God is working in his eternal purpose of salvation. He is not disturbed by the attacks of the enemy. He has hope, not only for the present, but for the future. Okay, so we need this hope of salvation. So regardless of how the enemy attacks our mind, you know, whatever he tries to bring our way, he can't move us from this hope that we have for our salvation. So the helmet is that hope that protects our mind. We need to put that on. The second piece of armor is the spiritual armor for mental protection, and it's the shield of faith. Okay. The word faith not only refers to basic truths of the gospel, but also to your confidence in God. Faith gives you the ability to believe. Okay. Faith is what helps us, or like I said, gives us that ability to know and to believe that we have salvation, that it's a free gift. Then when we, when we receive Christ into our lives, we have that promise that we are going to spend all eternity with him in heaven. That's faith. So once again, regardless of what comes our way, if we are standed, if we are rooted, and we have this shield of faith on this part of armor, nothing's going to move us. We're going to be able to stand regardless of what comes or goes. We are going to stand and believe because we have this faith in Christ, a faith that will help us stand, a faith that regardless, we know we are going to be with Jesus all eternity. So it's like Satan, bring it on. Fill my mind, do what you think you can do, but in the end result, I will be with Jesus in heaven forever and there's nothing you can do about it we need to tell him that and the third piece of spiritual armor is the girdle of truth 
Now that's found in Ephesians 6.14. So let's back up one. And it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay? The truth of God's word will defeat all the false accusations of the enemy and it will confirm God's promises to you that you can walk in this new life. Okay? That's the truth. God's word is truth. Okay? The word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He's the word. And we can believe it. We can take this to the bank. And regardless of what comes, the devil is a liar. He cannot steal this truth from us. Jesus Christ died. He rose again to bring salvation to us. Satan can't rob that from us. He's a liar. In John chapter 8, let's look at John, down in the New Testament, chapter 8, and that's verse 44. It says, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay? So Satan is a liar. Amen. Number three, the third strategy is declare a sound mind. We have to believe the Word of God and the Word of God tells us that He gives us a sound mind. So to eliminate these tormenting thoughts, claim the peace that is rightfully yours. Jesus said in John 14, 27, let's look at 14, 27. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. As the world giveth, not as the world giveth, give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I'm going to read this from the New King James Version so you can understand that a little bit better here. Um, 1427. Okay. It says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, let's look at Philippians chapter 4, also in the New Testament, verse 7. And it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Paul also wrote under the inspiration uh, found in Philippians 2.5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay? The word let, it means to permit or to embrace a mind like that of Christ. The Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. Okay? So we need to study the Gospels and we'll see that Christ's mind, how was his mind? What, did, what things did he think on? See, his mind was set on his destiny, on his purpose, right? Um, and victory. He knew, he knew he was going to be able, he was going to have victory over Satan. So that was his mindset. It wasn't like, oh, woe is me, why do I have to go through these things? Why is this happening to me? Why are they persecuting me? No, he had the mindset of victory. He had the mindset 
of his purpose. What was his purpose? Why was he there? He was there for us. And so it was, it, his mind was also, you think about it, the love of Christ. The Bible says the love of Christ dwells in us, but you think about the love that he had, which is called the agape love. It's a love that, it was a compassion that he had for all of us. It's a love that we could never display. I mean, we are to love, but this is like a, this is a God love. And he had this toward every one of us. This was his mindset. Okay, so we have to study the scriptures. Look up scriptures. What was the mind of Christ? And how does it relate to us? See, that's how we've been given a sound mind. Okay. We have not been given a mind that can just, you know, go here and go there and, and just wander and think these bad thoughts and these evil thoughts. When we have evil thoughts, when we have these things attacking our mind, know where it's coming from. And right away, we need to cast it down. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, and, and now the fourth one, fourth strategy is take wrong thoughts captive and cast them down. How many times have you read that scripture, but you just didn't know what's that mean? What are you supposed to do about that? Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And it reads, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ. Going back up to verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds. Did you hear that? Our weapons, they're not carnal, they're not fleshly, they're not like uh, you see armies today out there with their guns and their, you know, whatever they use as weapons. Our weapon, that is not our weapons. Our weapons are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Okay? So we're going to cast down arguments every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we're going to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So when these thoughts come, when we know that they're not good thoughts, we need to cast them down. We need to come against them. Think about a soldier that takes a... Um, enemy captive in the natural world and apply these ideas spiritually as you take captive every thought. If thoughts were not enemies, then there would be no need to take them captive. See? So Paul declared in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, he declared, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but not mighty through God for pulling down strongholds. And then he says here, casting down imaginations. The New King James Version says casting down arguments. I wanted to read it from this translation so you can understand a little bit more. Casting down imaginations. What are imaginations? Have you ever had imaginations? There's good imaginations, but there's also not so good. We need to cast them down. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, cast it down. Bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Read that scripture. Study out that scripture. Get a better understanding of what does that mean, casting down. Cast down evil imaginations. Bring every thought into captivity. 
and the obedience to the Lord. Consciously take control of your mind. Many of us need to take control of our mind. We just let it wander. We just let the enemy come and just fill our mind. I mean, just this morning, I, I, you know, I was in the hospital back on the 7th of July. And so I, I'm reading my bill today, the claim, and it's like, wow, that was a lot of money for one day hospital stay. But it showed $1,600 for my cash deductible for inpatient. And I'm there, what? So I went into Medicare looking up the 2023 inpatient stay, what the deductible is, well, it was $1,600. And I'm thinking, Lord, I can't pay $1,600. And right away, my mind was starting to fill up with all the negatives and how am I gonna do this? All of this money, how am I gonna pay it? All these things were just flooding my mind so then the thought came to me well check your secondary insurance so I went in there brought it up and the first one right there was a bill of sixteen hundred dollars and my second insurance paid it <laughs> Lord forgive me for not trusting forgive me for allowing these thoughts of the enemy to try and fill my mind and give me that fear so we have to cast down these imaginations, all of these thoughts, put them under the blood of Jesus. Okay, bring them into captivity. Don't allow them to flood your mind. Completely take control. Take control of your mind. Refuse to dwell on the thoughts that Satan inserts in our mind. And that was a thought Satan inserted in my mind. There's so many, you know, he will come against us in our the circumstances we find ourselves in. He'll come against us in our children, when our children aren't on the right track, or maybe you have a child that's a drug addict, or, you know, they're living in sin, they're an adulterer, you know, they're, they're in fornication, they're, you know, they're liars, they're thieves, whatever the case, maybe you have a child like this, one or two children like this, and we're always wanting to fear, and we're always allowing these, these thoughts to come in our mind, and, you know, Satan is inserting these thoughts. We need to pray for our children, pray daily for it. Get that baby and wrap them up in the blood of Jesus and believe, believe that God will set them free. Don't allow the enemy to come and insert all of these thoughts into your mind. You know, all these negative things, it will wear you down. It will depress you. You'll be so stressed out, you'll get sick. Don't allow this. We have to learn how to cast down these imaginations. Take all of these thoughts into captivity and get rid of them. Don't dwell on them. Don't keep them in the mind. To cast down, when the Bible says cast down these imaginations, God's not going to do it for us. And that's where we have to look at Scripture and, and read it. What is it really saying? Is it something God's going to do for us or is it something that we need to do? In this case, God's not going to do this for us. We've got to cast down the imaginations. we got to take them into captivity. Okay, something we do. We gotta think on the good things. We gotta ask God to change our thought patterns from the negative to the positive. And that's a hard thing to do. And I don't care what anybody says. You hear this all the time. You gotta start thinking positive. It's a very hard thing to do in this Christian life. Is it impossible? No, but it's hard to do. And the only way it's, it's going to become effective is to get into the Word of God learn the Word of God and learn how to use the scriptures just like Jesus used them when he was in the wilderness for 40 days and nights he knew how to come against Satan every time Satan tempted him and it was through the Word of God so we have to learn how to use to take the Word of God find it first of all open up your Bibles and read it and then take this word and apply it 
quote it, declare it in the name of Jesus, declare it to Satan that he has to leave. Okay? So we got to think about the good things. Paul said in Philippians 4 8, let's turn back to Philippians. Uh, let me see Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and he says finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are of a good report if there is any virtue if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things okay Think on these things, in other words. Think about these things. Not all the negatives. These are positive things to think about. This is where Paul's telling us this is what we need to do. And then the sixth one is renew your mind. Paul, Paul directed, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed. That's found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. He said to not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's found in Romans chapter 12. Let me turn there. Romans chapter 12. Uh, lost my... Verse 2. He says, well, starting with verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Then he says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We always hear, well, what is the will of God? What is the will of God? Well, the Word of God is going to tell you what the perfect will of God is. Okay, once we get renewed in our mind, our mind has to be renewed. So he's telling us, don't be conformed to the world. Many of us are conformed to the world. Many of us have that mentality. It's all we think about. But we got to let go of that and be renewed in our mind through the Word of God. The only way that's going to happen is to continue daily studying the Scriptures, searching the Scriptures, learning the Word of God. Then our minds are going to be renewed. We're not going to be conformed to the old ways. We're not going to be conformed to things in our past or you know, allowing all of this, um, the thoughts and the things that the enemy feeds into our minds because our minds are going to be renewed so we're going to be able to come against him when he wants to plant things in our mind that do not belong there so we've got to renew our mind by prayer and by studying and meditating on God's word the last one is keep your mind stayed on God that's another hard thing to do you know especially in the society, the world that we live in today, all the issues, all the problems that people have, sicknesses, diseases, we get bad diagnoses, or you know, and it brings worry and stress, and and at, at times like that, it's hard to stay to keep our minds on God. And I'm just being honest here; it's hard, you know, at times to do that. But we have to keep our minds centered on God instead of our problems and circumstances. Once again, it's not impossible. The more you learn to get into your word, daily studying, searching the scriptures, the more our mind is going to be renewed to the spiritual things. So by our mind being renewed in that direction, our mind is going to stay more on God. We're going to be able to declare, I don't care what's happening there. I don't care what the enemy is trying to tell me. I have a sound mind. My mind is Christ-centered. My mind, I have the mind of Christ. 
I think the way Christ thinks. See, we're going to be able to, to come against Satan that way once we keep our minds centered on God. We're going to be able to live more in that new life. He's promised us. Remember, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He has promised us that we can have this new life. But sometimes we think, well, if it's so new, why do we struggle? Why do we have all these things happening to us every day? Why do we always have to get bad news? Why can't we get good news all the time? Why do we have to go through stuff? Why do our children put us through things? Why do our spouses put us through things? Why do we have to suffer? We have all these questions. When, we, when we're all filled up with this, our mind's not being stayed on God. See, this is just life. We're in a fallen world. Things are going to happen. It's not a bed of roses that we're going to live in that people will tell you. But, if our minds are set on Christ, we can have peace. See? We can have and keep that peace. Peace whose minds are stayed on Christ. He gives us that peace. So regardless of what we go through, regardless of the hurt in our hearts, pain that we may suffer, we can still have that peace of God. It, the Bible says it's that peace peace that surpasses all understanding so all the things that are happening that we don't understand he gives us that peace that will bypass all of understanding that we don't have he'll give us that peace he says right here in Isaiah 26 3 thou will keep him in perfect peace or keep her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee if we would keep our mind on Christ focused on Christ we're going to have that perfect peace not just peace but perfect peace okay because he trusts in thee or he trusts in God see if we trust in God we are going to have perfect peace we can believe it. It's truth. And Jesus is truth. He's not going to lie to us. So if God's telling us we're going to have perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on Him, on Christ, you can be guaranteed you're going to get that perfect peace. So, Jesus spoke a new opinion over the adulterous woman's life. And He's speaking a new opinion over your life right now. No matter what your circumstance, no matter how bad your past or present is, you can still have that new beginning or a new life, a new walk. We can have new life. We can have a new walk. That's repentance. Turn completely around from the old life and begin walking down that straight and narrow path toward heaven, toward Christ, toward that new walk. You can declare that scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17, old things have passed away. I declare old things in my life are gone. They have passed away, and I declare that all things have become new in my life. If you are in Christ, we can declare those things today. Okay, Begin to agree with God. And speak over your life. Don't speak words of defeat. We like to do that, but don't. Speak words of victory, declaring that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Don't forget to add that part to it. Don't say, I can do all things, because in yourself you can do nothing. But with Christ, you can do all things. Okay? And that's found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And that's a whole study, a whole new study by itself. The power of the tongue. Okay. Choose life and begin to speak words 
that can embrace this new life that he's given us. Okay, Take time. Think about it. Remember all the strategies, all the accusations, all the things that Satan fills your mind with. Discouragement. We went over him last week. Discouragement. Depression. Wrong attitudes and emotions. Rebellion. Accusation. Condemnation. Fear. Take control of your mind today by declaring that the Holy Spirit will search your mind if you allow him to, if you ask him to. Okay? Use your spiritual armor. Claim or declare a sound mind. Take wrong thoughts captive and cast them down. Don't allow them to stay. If that wrong thought pops into your mind, cast it down. Pull it down in the name of Jesus. Bind it. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And then think on the good things. When we take things from our mind, we got to replace them with the good things. Pull out the bad. Cast down the bad. And fill it with the good. That's what we need to do. If we don't fill it up with the good things of God, then all the evil, all the attacks, all of the, you know, the, the arrows, the fiery darts, all these things are just going to continue filling back up in our mind, and then we're going to be again all filled up with negativity. That negativity that really it works in your mind and it makes you just sick, physically sick. Learn to cast them down. Pull them down. Bind them. Whatsoever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. So we need to bind them, cast them down, cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus, cover our minds with... Remember to put on the armor, the whole armor of God that's going to protect us. Amen. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this message today. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel, please do so today if you like the content today. And I pray that you would continue to join me on Thursdays uh, for Bible study. I don't know what I'll bring next Thursday, but um, I will get something up. And, and I just pray you, you know, you will just... Um, Listen to it. I believe you're really going to benefit from it. It could just be one little thing that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. So I encourage you, listen to these Bible studies. Subscribe, share, let your friends hear this. We all need to hear it because I guarantee you we all have the enemy working in our minds today. So share it. And give me a comment if you enjoyed, if you received something today. Put it down in, below in the comments and let me know. Father, I just thank you for your word today. I thank you, Lord, that, Father, we can have that perfect peace, Lord. Father, I thank you that we can cast down imaginations and all the thoughts that are in our mind that don't have no place there. Father, I thank you for your word, Lord. For it is powerful. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that, Father, regardless what goes on in our lives, you will give us that perfect peace whose minds are stayed on you. I pray, dear God, that everyone that listens today, Father, would receive something from your word, Lord, that they would get an understanding how to cast down imaginations and thoughts, Father. Give them that understanding, Lord how regardless of the circumstances in their life, even though they don't understand what's going on, Father, you will give them that perfect peace. Father, give them strength today. Show them, Lord. Teach them how to put on the full armor of God, how to protect our mind from the attacks and from the fiery darts of the enemy. Help us all today, Lord, to trust in you and to trust in your word. And I just pray blessing upon each hearer today. Lord, I just pray, God, that, Father, you would just go with them, 
Lord, and, and bless whatever they put their hands to do today. And I just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just pray your blessing, let the blessing of God be upon you today. And join me next week in the next Bible study. But until then, I will see you in my next video. Don't forget that I do have the crochet video that I'll be putting some videos up today. And just have a wonderful day. And remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Bye for now. Have a good day.